very good morning to all. I bring greetings from India. I'm Dr. Asuri Krishna. I'm working as Assistant Professor of Surgery at All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, India. And today I shall be presenting before you our experience of laparoscopic CBD exploration, more than 250 cases over the last decade. Uh, cholelithiasis is a pretty common problem in India, especially in northern India, and presence of concomitant CBD stones actually complicates not only the presentation but the management of these patients. ARCP has been the uh, standard of choice for treatment of patients with cholelithiasis and concomitant cholelithiasis. But however, with the increasing expertise in laparoscopic surgery, laparoscopic common bile duct exploration is not only feasible in post-ERCP patients, but also as a single stage procedure for those presenting with primary CBD stones. So the, our study was a prospective observational study over the last 10 years. All patients undergoing laparoscopic CBD exploration in a single surgical unit at the All Institute of Medical Sciences were included in the study. Uh, we recorded the pre-operative details, including the demographic profile, the clinical features, and the radiological parameters. All those patients who were ERCP failure, we also recorded the reasons for their failures. Intraoperatively, we recorded the operative time, uh, any bleeding, the technique of cholidocotomy, the technique for removal of stones, the size and number of stones, and the technique for cholidocotomy closure. Postoperatively, uh, the complications in the form of bile leak, bleeding, the hospital stay were all recorded in a pre-structured performer. Our primary outcome measure was basically to assess the success rate of laparoscopic CBD exploration. Uh, we also noted down the operative time, the conversion rate, the post-operative complication, and the hospital stay. So coming to the procedure, preoperatively, all the patients were correct NPO overnight. Uh, a single dose of prophylactic antibiotic was given at the time of induction. And these antibiotics were continued for 48 hours after surgery or longer, depending upon the outcome of the patients. So uh, the standard port placement that we used were 10, 5, 5, and 10 mm uh, camera port. We used an additional 5 mm port on the left side, which not only helped us in visualizing the upper end of CBD, but also helped us in the intracorporeal suturing. So these are the different uh, instruments that we use for stone clearance, including the Dormier basket, the mechanical lithotripters, the biflange and the triflange forceps, the Perkins circle. Okay. Uh, the different types, uh, usually we have done all the procedures through a supraduodinal uh, supra cholidocotomy. We have used the cold knife for doing a cholidocotomy, a hook cautery, and even a harmonic scalpel for doing the cholidocotomies. Uh, generally, we prefer using a rigid nephroscope. A 12 French 6 degree nephroscope is the one which we generally prefer for removing the stones and visualizing the common bile duct. Very sparingly do we use the flexible cholidocoscopes. Uh, so after the stent removal, uh, we tend to do thorough suction irrigation to remove the small fragments of stones and the sludge that is there. And these are all the different techniques of stone removal that we use. The crochet almay, then using a balloon catheter, using a tri-flange forceps. And in case of large stone impacted at the lower end of the CBD, we tend to break them with a mechanical lithotriptor before removing them. Uh, so majority of the patients, uh, we close them primarily without using endobiliary stent or a T-tube. But yes, in some patients where they have a lot of stone load or there was some evidence of some cholangitis, we tend to place endobiliary stent. Very sparingly have we used T-tube. And over the last three, four years, we have stopped using T-tube for closure of these CBDs. So these are the stones that we remove. So you can see the size and the... Uh, the bulk of stones that we get in our patients. So the average stone size is almost more than one centimeter in our patients. So coming to the results, uh, so the most common uh, age group is about 48.5 years, and majority of them were females, accounting for almost 70% of our case load. Very importantly, we have almost 40% of patients are post-ERCP failures, ERCP failures because of large stone size, uh, because of uh, difficult cannulations. And it is these patients also who are subject to the laparoscopic CBD exploration. So the average CBD diameter on MRCP was about uh, 1.2 centimeter. So these are the different images showing large stones, showing presence of multiple stones, another large stone in the lower end of CBD. So overall, if you see the bulk and the size of the stones in our patients is much more than reported in the literature. Coming to, uh, coming to the intraoperative parameter, the mean operative time was close to 100 minutes. Uh, initially, we did use cold knife and cautery, but now our preferred uh, method of doing a cholidocotomy is a harmonic. The average stone size is about 1.1 centimeter. If you see almost 70% of our patients, we do a primary closure, 
and the remaining over endobiliary stent. Uh, and T tube was only used in five, five patients. Coming to the post-operative complication, the most common complication was a transient bile leak, uh, which all of them were managed conservatively except for two patients where we required a post-operative ERCP and stenting. Uh, mortality rate, in the 255 patients that we operated, the mortality rate was only two. Both of them had post-operative bleeding, one from the liver bed, another from the omental vessel. The first patient actually finally had a diagnosis of a carcinoma gallbladder. If you take the overall success, the overall success was close to 90%. The success rate was slightly lower in post ERCP patients because of the dense addition, which were leaded to more conversion in this group of patients. However, if you take a primary single stage laparoscopic CBD explosion, the success rate was even better, close to 92%. Our follow up has been from 14 months to 6 years. There have been no recurrent stones and no strictures. Uh, we have been able to do a couple of uh, a randomized study comparing a single stage common bile duct. Uh, clearance compared to a two-stage, that is ERCP followed by laparoscopic cholecystectomy, which has been recently published, and we were able to tell that uh, a single-stage procedure is as good as a two-stage ERCP laparoscopic cholecystectomy with the advantages of lesser hospital stay, lesser cost, and actually a better success rate. So my take-home message will be that the laparoscopic CBD exploration is a fast emerging as the preferred treatment of patients with concomitant gallstone and CBD stones. I'll be happy to take any questions now, please. Hello. Yeah. Yes. So uh, my name is Iswanta Sukhandi. I'm a HPV surgeon at uh, Florida Hospital, Tampa. Um, very nice presentation, and uh, it's definitely an impressive 200-plus uh, uh, series of patients. Can you tell us a little bit more about the uh, long-term uh, outcome of this patient in terms of uh, common bile duct structure? Because the, the issues is uh, making the cholidocotomy. You, you, initially, you make a small cholidocotomy. After you're done with your CBD exploration, uh, sometimes uh, three quarters of the bile duct circumference is missing. And I saw you, you, you saw the bile duct sort of longitudinally. I, I know it, the, the traditional teaching is you, you saw it uh, transversely and uh, tell us about whether you use uh, a, a PDS or Vicryl. Thank you. Yeah, the question is nice taken. Um, actually, the, our selection criteria for doing a laparoscopic CBD exploration is CBD diameter at least 10 mm. So actually, the stricture rate is more if you choose a, a CBD less than 10 mm. And we prefer using an absorbable vicryl suture, uh, 3 -0 -0 or 4 -0 for closing the common bile ducts. Because uh, we are rigid with our selection criteria, taking more than 10 mm. Till for over the last 10 years, we haven't had a single patient with a CBD structure coming up to us. And uh, uh, if, you, if you are very careful in using the nephroscope and the cholidocoscope and the manipulation is restricted, then uh, there's not much damage to the wall and I, there's no long-term strictures as such. Hi, I'm Fernando Santos from uh, Vermont VA. Very nice presentation. Thank um, you. <clears throat> very impressive series. I would like to ask you about your selection criteria. Who do you choose for a surgery first approach? Uh, versus an endoscopic approach, and also a related question of how does the patient go through the pathway or institution? Uh, in a lot of institutions, sometimes the surgeon is the last one to be ever called, and so uh, it's really never multidisciplinary care unless a surgeon sees them first. Thank you. Actually, uh, actually, we did a randomized trial, as I already told, uh, to compare a single-stage procedure with a two-stage procedure. Our selection criteria is basically a C any, any patient coming with CBD stone with a CBD diameter more than 10 mm, we can choose them for a laparoscopic CBD exploration. When we did that study, uh, we found out that uh, a single stage procedure where you subject the patient directly to a laparoscopic CBD exploration without doing an ERCP, we found that the outcomes were, uh, not, were better than ERCP in terms of the overall cost, the hospital stay, and also the success rate. Uh, now it's our uh, protocol that all patients with CBD stone, especially stone size more than one centimeter, we tend to subject them directly to a primary CBD explosion. And most of the patients, they directly come to us at the, or they go to the gastroenterology and they're referred to us. So uh, now we have slowly shifted our protocol to do a single stage procedure rather than subjecting them to ARCP. Also post ARCP, doing a laparoscopic cholecystectomy is actually difficult and there are more dense addition. There's a higher rate of conversion, even if the literature states there's a higher rate of conversion of laparoscopic cholecystectomy in patients who have already been subjected to ARCP. So now we have a protocol of doing a single stage CBD exploration at the first instant itself. But the diameter of the CBD has to be at least 10 mm. That's what's the selection criteria. Uh, just uh, technically speaking, 
uh, obviously, we're not discussing intransistive, you went straight to the CBD. Uh, the knife that you use, I just want to your comment on it because this is not a very safe method, especially with not placing stage sutures, you may go through, and the site of the incision on the CBD where you opened it, you want to comment on that first? Yes, actually, uh, the cold knife we used in the first uh, 20 or 30 cases, then we start, stopped using the cold knife. Yes, there is always definitely a possibility of you going through the, uh, the posterior wall of the common bile duct. But the CBDs, if you see the cases, the CBD is actually quite dilated, and the stone load, there's a lot of stone load. So the possibility of the knife going through and through, if you're very careful, is actually minimum. And uh, one more question. The T-tube complications, although you elected not to put the T-tube, um, what were the complications with your T-tube and the reason why you, did not, you felt so comfortable that you don't need T-tube despite the multiplicity of the stones, which most of the time will lead you to need an access, and especially that your endobiliary stent that you're placing often may not go into the duodenum. Yeah, that's right. Actually, we initially, if you have seen that we have placed T-tube in only five, in, in five patients. Actually, T-tube has its own morbidity, has, its, uh, has a lot of morbidity. So what we found out that doing a primary closure or putting on a CBD does not ha uh, has the same outcome as those patients undergoing a T-tube placement without adding the morbidity of T-tube. Routinely, we pl place these patients post-operatively on uh, uh, buscopan, that is hyoscine butyl bromide, to relax the sphincters. And therefore, we don't have bile leaks. Even if the bile leaks that we have, they are all transient bile leaks, mostly from the uh, suture bite sites. And they tend to, and all of them were managed conservatively, and they were less than 10 percent. So the, this is another way, uh, another way of putting out that T tube is actually not required in this uh, present era, where you actually do have ERCP in case the patient develops some postoperative bile leak or cholangitis. You always have the option of doing an ERCP and stenting. Very good, excellent. Thank One you. quick question. Yes. What was your average length of hospitalization? Uh, my our average length for about 4.5 days, ranging from about three days to 10 days. Wow. Thank you. Thank you.